PTCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, Today is our topic of discussion, Adrenal Insufficiency. So, which is a last presentation from our Endocrine Emergency Series. So, this is what our outline of presentation. So, before getting into the Adrenal Insufficiency, so again, we will get a flash note on Adrenal Gland, right? So, adrenal gland also known as a suprarenal gland we know and then again it will comes under the part of uh, endocrine system, right. So, it have uh, some secretion so that will aid in the some function in our body. So, this will first thing it is a suprarenal gland other name for the adrenal gland and then it is situated above the or uh, kidney and then second thing it will comes under the part of or it will comes under the endocrine system. So, this is regarding the adrenal gland. So, and then coming into uh, uh, secretion related, it have uh, two major regions we have that is outer region is a cortex region, cortex region, inner region is a medulla region, medullary region, okay, right. So, outer cortex, there are, we, we are getting three type of hormones that is cortisol or glucocorticoid, then mineralocorticoid and then we have a gonadotropic hormone or gonadocorticoids. So, these are the three things we are getting from the Cortis, uh, cortex related and then one more thing that is medulla related we are getting the catecholamines that is your adrenaline and the noradrenaline uh, small amount of dopamine also we are getting. So, this is what regarding the anatomy and physiology of small nut cell regarding the adrenal gland and then uh, we will see the some functions regarding these hormones. So, if you understand the normal function of each hormone then it is very easy to understand the how it will be in a uh, hyper and then hypo state. So, we can easily identify which will, uh, how it will be in a hypo state, how it will be in a uh, hyper cases, right. So, for okay. So, the functions wise we divided into t, uh, two things, right, adrenal gland, cortex and then medulla. So, in cortex we told we have a three type of hormones that is your glucocorticoid, mineralocorticoid and then gonadocorticoids. Then glucocorticoid otherwise known as a cortisol, cortisol, right. So, mineralocorticoid other name we have a aldosterone. So, this gonadotropic it is nothing but your sex hormone. So, that is androgen and then estrogen, androgen and then estrogen. So, this is what the three secretion we are getting from the cortex. So, first regarding the cortisol. So, cortisol, what is the function of cortisol? Cortisol is nothing but the name itself the, we told it is a glucocorticoid. So, it will aid in the function of glycogen synthesis, glycogen synthesis and then gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis. Then it will resist your insulin release, it will inhibit or it will resist your insulin release. So, these are the function it have and then it will aid in uh, function of protein metabolism, okay, protein metabolism. So, this is the way what we are getting by this means it will aid or it will take a role in to increase the glucose level. So, it will cause hyperglycemia. So, this thing will activate at the time of when your body in the uh, hypoglycemic episode or when your body in the stress, right. So, on the time it will comes at a part of compensatory mechanism. So, glu uh, glycogen synthesis. So, it will store up for the some purpose. So, when your body need, so it will uh, break down the glycogen and then it will release the glucose. So, this is the way it will increase the glucose level in the body. Okay. So, this is one of the function. And then one more important thing of the cortisol, it have a action in the anti-inflammatory. So, it will suppress your immune system. Thereby, it will provide the anti-inflammatory. And then third most important thing, that it will whenever your body in the stress it will uh, regulate or it will help your heart rate uh, heart and then vascular bit thereby it will uh, uh, directly or indirectly it will uh, help the hormone of catecholamine. So, along with catecholamine it will regulate your vascular related uh, means it will cause hypertension or it will cause your tachycardia related things. So, whenever the need, so at the time 
it the glucocorticoid will accompany with your catecholamine and then that will take a role so these are the three major function first one it will increase the glucose level or else hyperglycemia will cause second thing it will suppress your immune system thereby anti inflammatory third one along with an catecholamine it will take a role in the systemic related things so this is the thing comes under the cortisol and then second thing aldosterone okay mineralocorticoid so mineralocorticoid aldosterone it is a main function that will take a role in the water homeostasis water homeostasis and then potassium regulation so whenever your body in the hyperkalemia that activate your renin angiotensin system thereby you will get a, the renin angiotensin system if you able to remember means first we will get a angiotensinogen right angiotensinogen so in the presence of renin uh, that uh, one more uh, things will form that is uh, angiotensin 1 and in the presence of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor angiotensin 2 will form and then angiotensin 3 will form so at last you will get a product of aldosterone that is your glucocort sorry mineralocorticoid so this aldosterone which will cause the it will retain the fluid and then it will retain the sodium also mean the same time it will ex excrete the extra potassium so this is the way it will act so aldosterone will take a role in the hyperkalemia or it will regulate the potassium level in the body mean the same time it will take a role in the retention of fluid and then sodium so this is the function of aldosterone what about the androgen estrogen so it is a sex hormone it will uh, leads to the secondary sexual changes everything it will taken over so this is what the corticoid related medullary related you have a catecholamines that is adrenaline noradrenaline and then dopamine it will take a role in the something regarding the sympathetic nervous system related so this is what the whole thing regarding the secretion and then their functions and then one more important thing we have to remember that is regulation of hormone so how the body will regulate so uh, whether increase secretion or decrease secretion first thing cortisol wise so cortisol completely depend upon your central means so it will depend upon your anterior pituitary gland so whenever means again anterior pituitary here so whenever your body in the stress or whenever your body want your uh, adrenal hormone so it will send a one messenger from here to your adrenal gland the messenger name is ACTH adrenocortico tropic hormone ACTH adrenocortico tropic hormone okay so with it ACTH comes and attach your uh, adrenal gland adre most importantly cortex part thereby it will secrete the cortisols hormone cortisol okay or glucocorticoid hormone so this cortisol is depend upon the ACTH so this is also the same thing our uh, like our thyroid gland so whenever your body need or else whenever your body have a less amount of cortisol so the need is higher so on the time your body will request thereby you, your uh, anterior pituitary will secrete more amount of ACTH so here both are negative pressure so we call as a negative feedback mechanism the same thing which we uh, discussed in the thyroid uh, regulation of hormone right the same thing only so this is regarding the cortisol and then what about the mineralocorticoid that is your aldosterone so we explained the path right renin angiotensin system the same thing only it will uh, fully happen in your kidney itself so whenever your body in the hyperkalemia or hypokalemia or if you if a body in the hypotension or hyponatremia means that the time your body will activate renin angiotensin system thereby the aldosterone will come in the pot so gonadotropic is nothing but that is your uh, hormone related sex hormone related that is androgen and then estrogen so this is the regarding first we told the anatomy so where it is how it will be work and then physiology related secretion we told what are the functions we told and then how the regulation of hormone uh, takes place that is also we explain now we will get to enter into the adrenal insufficiency so it is nothing but adrenal insufficiency there is a insufficient amount of or there is a insufficient secretion of adrenal hormones mainly here we are focusing uh, adrenal insufficiency will focus on the only cortex hormone so that is your glucocorticoid mineralocorticoid gonadotropins these three things only we are discussing in the adrenal insufficiency that is adrenal insufficiency that indicates only cortis, uh, your cortex hormone only it is not related with your uh, medullary part okay so here also we have a two primary uh, 
different uh, different causes first one different types first one primary adrenal insufficiency second one is a secondary adrenal insufficiency primary adrenal insufficiency in the sense there is a problem in your adrenal gland itself secondary in the sense secondary to some other causes means there is a extra adrenal causes like there might be there might be a problem in your anterior pituitary or there might be a problem in your hypothalamus that is prime secondary primary in the sense the problem or pathology will be in your adrenal gland itself so this is regarding the primary adrenal insufficiency the other name for primary adrenal insufficiency that is addison's disease okay so as like we told primary means pathology will be in the adrenal gland secondary means there will be a problem in the anterior pituitary or your hypothalamus so and then one more important life threatening emergency in the adrenal insufficiency is a adrenal crisis so it is a one of the life threatening emergency here the person will present with a hyponatremia hyperkalemia hypotension and then hypoglycemia so it will be in a more severe form so it is a exacerbation of adrenal insufficiency so this is the condition here the person the mortality risk is more higher those who have a comorb like a diabetic mellitus or those who are elderly people they have a poor reserve volume so because of that they are more prone or they are more vulnerable to get a mortality ratio is higher in uh, those group of people so etiology wise so i can tell two uh, major important causes first one infection second one autoimmune condition okay infection and then inflammation or infection and then autoimmune condition infection wise in indian setup tuberculosis is a one of the most important cause for the adrenal insufficiency so, so other infection you can tell hiv and then all fungal infection viral infection that's also comes under but in india tuberculosis is a one of the most important cause for the adrenal insufficiency so medications also we can tell so some other medication like etamidate so our uh, sedative agents right so it is a etamidate that will uh, uh, inhibit your enzymes that will participate in the cortisol synthesis and then we have a penitoin so that is also it will increase the metabolism of cortisol thereby it will reduce the cortisol level in your body and then one more important drug that is your corticosteroid so if you are externally injecting corticosteroids means that will inhibit or that will alter your acth hormone level that will release from that your anterior pituitary gland so these are the some things and then autoimmune wise addison's disease so addison's disease means that is your primary adrenal insufficiency so these are the some uh, common reasons you just remember infection that is tuberculosis and then anti inflammatory condition or aut sorry autoimmune condition that is your addison's disease and then clinical features wise as like i told four important cardinal features you have to remember that first one is your hypoglycemia second one is your hyponatremia and then third one is your hyperkalemia fourth one is your regarding with an hypotension so these are the four major important cardinal features you will get in the adrenal insufficiency cases so clinical features you just remember in a pre hospital also you just rule out check whether the person have hypotension and then uh, hypoglycemia also through that glucometer you will get hyperkalemia and then hyponatremia hyperkalemia ecg you can rule out hyponatremia it is difficult to perform because laboratory there, there is a uh, resource limited setting we can't do in a pre hospital but in hospital if you have all the features if the person have means this is a cardinal feature for your adrenal insufficiency so again the clinical feature wise if you want to elaborate means you just remember the what are the functions we told based on that you can write so cortisol means so it we told it will be increase your glucose level so if cortisol deficiency means the person ultimately will present with a uh, complaints or history of hypoglycemia so that is the thing and then uh, again it, we told it is uh, it will along with catecholamine it will take a role in the sympathetic or systemic some uh, functions right so that is also will diminish and then we told regarding the anti inflammatory so the person will get more uh, they we can see the more prone features of inflammation so that is regarding the cortisol and then coming into mineralocorticoid that is your aldosterone there you can see the the person present with a hypotension even you will infuse the volume that also the person won't recover from the hypotension so that will be refractory to the fluid volume that we can see in the 
uh, adri means your uh, mineralocorticoid deficiency uh, in your gonadotropic related so you can see some uh, secondary sexual changes there will be altered secondary sexual changes means the person will present with an um, without mustache or they will present with an uh, decreased axillary pubic hair those, those are the things libido those are the things will present in a gonadotropic deficiency so you just remember the normal physiology function then you can easily identify what are the clinical features that will arise in each deficiency so diagnosis as like i told remember four things hypoglycemia hyponatremia hyperkalemia and then hypotension so if it is there means straight away you have to rule out the you can put differential diagnosis as adrenal insufficiency you have to furtherly work up and then you have to find out the condition so diagnosis again hypoglycemia you can do the glucometer test hyponatremia you can go with an uh, your serum sodium level you have to check mean the same time you have to check the serum osmolality level and then hyperkalemia you can go with an ecg and then you can perform the laboratorical test uh, then uh, finally hypotension you have to do the um, manual bp or you can go with an your non invasive blood pressure invasive blood pressure measurement you can go with that so and then furtherly to rule out the cause for the adrenal insufficiency we have to work up uh, whether if it is an infection means for tuberculosis work up we have to do montag test and then if it is an uh, autoimmune disease means for that we have to work up for the further work up we have to do so again if it is a primary means okay and then you have to rule out any secondary related causes any adrenal uh, because of any pituitary tumors those are the things means you have to go with an ct and then mri level so those are the things and then one more important thing in a diagnosis part we will uh, do the cortisol level cortisol level in the person so that will be like uh, we used to call as a 8 am cortisol because morning early morning there will be excessive cortisol production in our body so to uh, based on that concept we have to do the early morning sample of cortisol level okay that we have to take we used to call as a 8 am cortisol level so as soon as possible in a early morning we have to take the fresh sample and then we have to send to the lab that way we have to check the cortisol level so that is regarding your diagnosis related and then finally management part uh, in the view of pre hospital what are the things you have to remember again remember the four major cardinal features so hypoglycemia in the sense how we will manage straight away we will go with an your 25 percentage textrose and then we if you have a glucagon uh, if you don't have a textrose and then you have a glucagon means the glucagon we have advantage we can go with an iv im subcutaneous which are root 1 mg we can give and then uh, hyperkalemia if you are seeing any ecg changes means straight away you can treat with the calcium gluconate for myocardium stability and then uh, you can give with an gi bolus you can go with an or you can go with an salbutamol nebulization so those are the things we have or if it is not controlled again you can based on your consultation you can go with an diuretics like prusimate and then third feature is your hypotension straight away we will infuse the volume um, 30 ml per kg so that is uh, you are to volume infusion we have to do so still give after volume infusion still the hypotension persist means again you have to add vasopressis drugs so this is regarding the hypotension hyponatremia in pre hospital it is not possible to rule out so we can't rule out whether the person in hyponatremia or not features will be there like lethargy alter uh, sensorium those are the things will be there sometimes the person will present with a mild headaches but uh, with that clinical feature itself we can't uh, uh, like uh, diagnose like a hyponatremia and then we can't treat that assumption wise we can't treat furtherly we have to work up for the hyponatremia then only we can rule out and then we have to treat so hyponatremia part uh, we can exclude in the pre-hospital once the person get into the in-hospital that we will rule out and then furtherly they will manage the condition so we have to going to manage only three condition hypernatremia hypoglycemia and then hypotension if it is a in hospital means what are the things mainly this four thing only we are going to manage symptomatic management along with we are going to supplement the corticosteroid hormones so that is the thing so four symptomatic four uh, things we are going to manage along with we are going to supplement the hormone so that is the thing in the in hospital so we will detail those are the things first one so remember the two types primary and then secondary so primary in the sense there will be a problem in your uh, adrenal itself there you will get a all deficiency means you will get a glucocorticoid mineralocorticoid 
gonadotropic hormone all three deficiency will be there so here ideally you have to replace the three hormones so for glucocorticoid you have to replace the hydrocortisone or dexamethasone and then uh, for mineralocorticoid you have to replace the drugs related with an aldosterone that is flutrocortisone 0.1 mg and then we have a gonadotropic hormone either you have to replace the, the uh, estrogen androgen those also replacement should be done and then if it is a secondary uh, adrenal insufficiency means mainly you will get the features of cortisol deficiency why means we told that mineralocorticoid corticoid that will uh, regulate by your renin angiotensin system again your gonadotropic also that is depend upon some other region it is not from your anterior pituitary so secondary in the sense there will be a problem in your pituitary gland or hypothalamus right so in secondary uh, adrenal insufficiency only the deficiency of cortisol will be there so we have to adequately supplement the cortisol hormone alone okay that is the concept regarding the primary and then adrenal insufficiency management so for uh, better choice in um, if you want to uh, treat the primary adrenal insufficiency with the one drug means you can give the hydrocortisone so hydrocortisone 100 mg we have right uh, oil format so that 100 uh, means hydrocortisone it is a better choice it have a two properties both like you have a property of glucocorticoid and then you have a property of mineralocorticoid also so Hydrocortisone is an ideal drug of choice or it is a better drug of choice have a two properties. But if you do not have a hydrocortisone means you can go with a dexamethasone. But if you are administering dexamethasone you have to add the one mineralocorticoid property that is your flutrocortisone. So this is the ring regarding. Uh, thing regarding hydrocortisone is a maximum dose per day is a 200 mg. Okay, each uh, in a one day you have to administer only 200 mg. So each vial uh, contains 100 mg. First initial dose you can 100 mg you can give us a uh, first dose and then second 100 mg you can give us a every uh, sixth hourly you can give or if you have a 200 mg so if the person in crisis means 100 mg you can give initial bolus and then 100 mg you can uh, update uh, you can give within uh, the 24 hours you can divide and then you can give every 12 hours or sixth hour or eight hour but if the person is not in crisis you have to replace means that 200 mg you can divide into four doses so based on that you can administer every uh, sixth hourly you can administer so there is a ring regarding the hydrocortisone dexamethasone 4 mg or 8 mg based on the person's uh, requirement we will initiate flutrocortisone it is a normal dose 0.1 mg we will give so this is regarding the your management part so adrenal crisis also it is nothing but here also we are going to manage that four and then we are going to supplement so the same thing only you have to hypoglycemia you have to give the ad adequately you have to give the uh, textose containing solution 25 grams you have to replace and then uh, second thing you have to uh, manage the hyponatremia with the so uh, normal saline or you have to go with a three percentage saline if uh, based on the person status hypotension again you have to infuse the volume if it is again refractory to uh, fluid therapy means you have to go with an vasopressors adrenaline noradrenaline dopamine those are the things and then fourth one it, uh, is your hyperkalemia that we have to go with an hyperkalemic uh, message management message along with we are going to supplement the steroid hormone so as like i told the person here the person in the crisis so first initial 100 mg of hydrocortisone we have to give us a bolus and then remaining 100 mg you can divide as a dose of either 8 hourly or 12 hourly you can replace so per day maximum dose is a 200 mg so remaining all things are same only so supportive care you have to do vasopressors if needed you have to go with it antibiotic ways if the person have infection means you have to uh, uh, adequate appropriate antibiotic you have to administer so if the person already have a history of adrenal insufficiency uh, if they are uh, getting some other sick or if the if their body in a stress manner means that you have to administer three times higher than the normal dose so let me explain one time so already the person have a adrenal insufficiency state previous history of adrenal insufficiency suddenly the person get infected with some other disease or uh, infected with some other organism or the person have a uh, going for any surgery uh, those are the things if the uh, history is there means there you have to replace or there you have to administer 
three times higher than the normal dose okay so if you are giving um, like uh, what i can tell if you are giving 1 mg for example some other drug you are giving 1 mg means three times higher so three four three mg or four mg four mg adequately you have to administer to the person so this is the one thing regarding the uh, adrenal uh, insufficiency management so these are the things regarding whole thing regarding the adrenal insufficiency so do your best shalom